Listen up, my fellow coaches and leaders. The truth is we all need a space to learn and grow so we can bust through our personal glass ceilings and step into our full potential, especially if we want to create the space to allow others to step into theirs. And that's where I come in. I'm not just a former clinical psychologist, but also a seasoned dream life and business coach with over two decades of experience helping people shatter their personal barriers and unleash their greatness. And here's the thing, you don't have to figure this all out on your own. As a heart-centered entrepreneur or industry leader, you deserve the best tools and strategies to help you and your business thrive. And that's why I'm excited to share my experience with you through the Coaching for Coaches podcast. Utilizing powerful combination of clinical skills, quantum physics, and strength-based coaching methods, I'll show you exactly what to do and exactly what to say to unleash your true potential and create a path for your clients to follow. And not just that, I'll also teach you how to build a thriving coaching business around your unique skill set and passions. So let's get started. It's time to answer your calling, make a lasting impact on the world, and create a lucrative living doing exactly what you love. Welcome to the Coaching for Coaches podcast, where greatness begins. Hey, 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 you guys, big welcome back to Coaching for Coaches. My name is Denise Walsh, and here is what I know. Leaders need to be led, coaches need to be coached, and so this podcast has been created to help you become an excellent coach. And what does that even mean? Uh, We've got a lot of different topics that we cover here, but today we have a super special guest who's going to help us step in to the next version of ourselves so we actually start to embody it even before it shows up in our life because guess what that is how it's going to show up in our life so i'm super excited to chat a uh, big coaches welcome to amanda wheel hello thank you so much for having me here denise all right well i'm excited to chat with you because i think you help people really step into who they desire to be as the ceo of the style awakening and a style or a style specialist You are the go-to expert in the fashion world, helping CEOs, entrepreneurs, show hosts, crew professionals, like step into what they, who they are and what they want to portray. So tell us a bit first about how you got here and why this is something that you really were like, this is something the world needs. Yes. Yes. I love that. Um, I have always loved style. I've always loved clothes. I've always loved putting together outfits and I just thought everyone did. I was like, doesn't everyone love to go shopping? Can't they just put together outfits? Don't they feel good? And I was actually in corporate America for for many, many years, over like 12, 13 years. And it was during that time that I started doing my own deeper leadership work and self-reflection and really started to realize that, you know what? This isn't what my soul wants anymore. What my soul really wants is to play with style, is to, to play with clothes. And I started to understand that there were actually a lot of people who didn't who don't know how to do that. And I started to realize on a deeper level that, that many people actually use clothes to hide and whether they're doing it consciously or subconsciously, there's a lot that I can see deeper within just based on how someone is showing up in their style. Like it definitely starts within and then your style reflects how you truly feel about yourself. So as I started to realize that there was some deeper work here and as I continued down my path of deeper diving into myself, I was like, okay, there is a world where I can merge style, fashion transformation in a way that's relatable to the everyday man, woman, entrepreneur, coach, not just the style icons or the celebrities. Right. Right. It's fascinating to think about the fact that the way you show up in the world is often a reflection of the way you feel about yourself. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. And it's, it's so, I always say it's so much deeper than just the clothes. And after my clients start working with me, they're like, wait, what are we doing here? I thought we were just revamping my style. I'm like, oh, we're revamping everything right now. And it's just, you know, people have a lot of stories around clothes, whether it's a scarcity mindset that maybe they can't have a certain thing, or maybe they've been told they have a specific body type, so they can't wear that. Or 
for a lot of people, they're scared to actually step into the spotlight, even though that's what they want. They want to be a coach. They want to be a leader. They want to be on stage. Yet subconsciously, they're actually scared for that attention because people might judge them or, you know, something might happen. And so it's really about like leveling up their confidence and really leveling up how they feel about themselves so that they no longer are even scared of the judgment. Yeah. I think that that is more prevalent than we even think, you know, we've got these dreams that are brewing inside, but it's so, it can feel so vulnerable to put it out into the world. And so we can stop ourselves from truly going after it because we're afraid of what people will say, what they will think. And, um, you know, the, the judgment that may come. So how do you help somebody identify who they want to be? That's my favorite part. That's like getting clear on the style and soul vision. And that's something I do before I even dive into someone's closet, before I even shop with them or do anything. We always start with that. And it's, it's essentially like a series of questions that I start to take them through to really peel back the layers and uncover what do you actually want in your life? Like, where are you going? What is your dream? We do this meditation process and visualization and things come out of them. They start to realize, oh my gosh, that's actually what I want. That's who I want to be. And it's just starting to peel back what's in the way of that and, and understand, well, how would that person dress now? Let's say what you truly want has come to fruition. What are you wearing at your celebration party? And helping them realize that they get to just be that person now to bring it to fruition faster. So it's taking a look at what the end goal would be like, all right, so if you are the CEO or if you are a thriving coach, or if you are speaking on stages internationally, like you are a sought after speaker, what would that person be wearing? And what would that person look like? And, and then getting super clear on that and then starting to do that now. Yeah. Cause a lot of people play and especially the coaches building business. I get it. There's, there's the money, there's the investment. Like there's a lot, especially if you've left another job or there's a lot of kind of insecurity that, that you can feel. And so what I hear a lot is, okay, well, if that happens, then I'll buy the clothes. And it's like, that's, that's like manifestation backwards. Cause you're waiting for, you're waiting for something else to happen before you actually take action. And I'm not saying go out and like buy a whole new wardrobe or like go into debt revamping, but just get clear on like when that is comes to fruition, what's one thing, like what's one thing you're going to wear on stage or what's one thing you're going to wear for your first client session. And then go out and find that one thing and start wearing it and really notice how you feel. Cause it is about embodying that version of you so that you are then elevated to that frequency to call it in. Yeah. So So you could think like, what's my one stage outfit? What's the one thing I'm going to wear to the celebration dinner? What's that? And really start stepping into that space and that feeling. Yep. Very cool. And and visualize it and put it on. And it's the same as like, you know, everyone gets their wedding china and then you're like, you never end up using the wedding china because you're waiting for the special occasion. It's like, just stop waiting. Every day is a special occasion. So so wear, what did it, wear the ball gown now, wear the tool skirt now, wear whatever it is. Even if you're sitting at home, I don't know, writing your speech, right? Whatever it is you're doing, put it on, even if no one else is going to see you, because it's about you. It's about your energy and your frequency. What are some common blocks that you have experienced as you're working with people? It's so it's interesting. It's usually different for men and women. Um, with women, a lot of times it comes down to worthiness worthiness. So, so they might say, you know, they might say it's money or they might say it's, they don't have time, but deep down, it's really like a worthiness where maybe they don't feel like they deserve to have some beautiful clothing, or maybe they feel like they don't deserve to actually be seen, or maybe they've been told that they're not good enough or they're not attractive. So why would they even put on the clothes to try to show up? Or maybe they've been judged in the past. They're scared. So it's, it's, it's a lot of worthiness for for women. Um, you know, and I do see that with men as well. And then also for men, it's like this fear of like, are people going to think they care too much if they actually then Mm. pour into their clothes and start showing up differently? Are they like trying too hard? Right. Cause there's this kind of coolness of just being relaxed or, um, I don't know, 
Yeah. So, yeah. And that is interesting to think about. Yeah. And it's like, you don't have to show up in a three piece suit or you don't have to show up in, you know, a blazer. You don't have to do that. It's just getting clear on like, what is your unique style? What is your authentic style? What does that look like for you? It might be awesome workout wear. It might right. be a really cool sweat set. And that's great. Just understand that like the one you're putting on is elevated. It's not like stained or old, or you've had it for 10 years and it has all these bad memories. <laughs> it's, yeah. So how does shifting what you wear impact the energy people bring into the room? Oh my gosh, hundred percent. So if you, I, I love that. I love the energy conversation. Cause if we think about it, everything is energy, you know, everything is made up of energy. So when you're actually putting clothes on your body that feel good, that make you feel a certain way, you're naturally like your skin is your largest organ. So you're, you're taking that on and then something happens, just something happens to your subconscious, something happens to how you view yourself. And naturally you start feeling better. It's the same when you eat healthier foods and when you really fuel yourself with proper nutrition and exercise and you're taking care of your body, it's the same with what you're putting on your, on what you're putting on your body. And you can think of it on an even deeper level too, when you start to invest in nicer fabrics you know, like the silks and the bamboos and the hundred percent cotton, that is so much better for your body than like a polyester, which is not really great for your skin to be putting on. And then you, you even think another step of that is like, who's working on those clothes and what was their energy? Like, how are they treated? How are they paid? Because they're sitting there working on your clothes. And then unless you're really good at clearing things, then you're taking that on as well. So it's like, there's, it can, you can go really deep with this. Yeah. But I say the easiest thing to understand is like, even color can impact you when you start to think about um, chakras and, and the energetics of color. Um, and that can also really elevate your energy when you're wearing the color that it is helping you really align. There's something about walking in the room and feeling like I got this. You know, where you have your shoulders back and your eye contacts up and you have that confidence about you, people notice it because a lot of times people don't have confidence and they're shrugged, they're on their phone, they're staring down, they're not engaged in the world around them. So when someone shows up engaged in the world around them, people take notice. We do. And you don't even have to say anything. Yeah. It's those people who are the most magnetic because they do, they shine their confidence. They're not worried about, oh no, who should I go talk to? What are people thinking about me? So then people naturally approach you. Mm -hmm. And it's the same with it's, you know, I think, especially for a lot of coaches, as you're building a business, you're in the doing, you're in the doing, I get it. You're like figuring out your website, you're figuring out your offer, you're figuring out your audience. There's so much doing. And I think a lot of times we forget about the being and it's, it's in the being where you might just be going out to the grocery store. And all of a sudden you have a conversation with someone and they're like, Oh, I actually need a coach. Oh, can we chat? It, it gets to be easy like that because you're just, like your people are there. They're just waiting for you to be at the right level, frequency level to attract them in. Right. And so you start by, you have a confidence color quiz. Is that right? Yes, I do. The quiz is amazing. So, um, you know, I mentioned briefly about the chakras and colors. And if you're wondering like, well, what color should I be wearing to feel most confident? The quiz is going to take you through that and help you understand today, current moment, what color is going to really elevate, elevate your, your chakras, your energy levels so that you feel more confident. So start, start with that, like start with colors and, and notice how you feel when you wear those colors and then start playing around with different pieces of clothing. And just, it's, it's all about being more intentional right? and being more aware of what you're putting on, on your body and noticing how that shifts you. Do you find that having some staple pieces so you don't have to try so, or like think so much, you know what I mean? Is it, is it helpful to have a few staples or a few go-to items that you know will make you feel good and look good together? Absolutely. Absolutely. Cause I think less is, is more when it comes to style and understanding what those, those key pieces are. Maybe it's a great pair of jeans. Maybe it's a great wide leg trouser. Maybe it's a really great power blazer. Uh, maybe it's a blouse that you love or a dress that then you can change up by throwing different jackets on top of it understanding what those core pieces are. And then also those are the pieces that you invest a little bit more in knowing that you're going to be able to mix and match them so many different ways. And they're going to last you 10 plus years. So it's really also understanding, yeah, what are those key investment pieces versus always going into the fast fashion and buying the latest trend? Cause that's not your true style. Right. And if you, you want something that 
will last a while that you can mix and match and make it look different in different pictures, but like you can trust it. So it's your go-to easy thing to pull from your closet. Yeah. It's like your, your power piece, your hero piece. That's what I always say. And maybe it's a great pair of shoes. Yeah. Or even like, like I have one client where her power piece is these huge chunky necklaces. So every time she wears that, she's like, I'm the seven figure CEO. Let's go. That's right. (laughs) And so she's like, here we are. (laughs) So tell me a few stories from clients that have been working with you, how they, what they started with and where they are now. Yes, yes, yes. So one of my favorite is um, because a a, a lot of times we also start with a closet purge. We get clear on the style vision. You got to purge your closet of the things that are not in alignment with where you're going. And there's a lot of stories and emotions that come out that I learn about people when we're purging. That's the really deep, deep work. Um, One client, we did that. We went through, we purged her closet. There were pieces that she had been holding on to for ever. And she was actually in a little bit of a depression and realized that everything in her closet was brown and black. And this is a woman that loves Hawaii. Like she loves beautiful flowers. And she put the, she's like, what am I doing? And so we purged everything out. And literally that week she called in a $40,000 contract. Wow. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. It's that's fascinating one- to see when you release and you create space, what shows up for you. That's exactly what it is. And and a lot of people just don't think about that in their closet. Right. But it's the same. You're holding stagnant energy in your closet. So it's letting that go. Um, I have another client where when she came to me, she didn't feel confident going to networking events. So she um, asks people to invest in her for real estate. And she didn't feel like someone that could be asking for a million dollars. And so we revamped her style. And literally right after we did that, she was going back to another networking event and they actually offered for her to be up on stage and present. And she's like, I just wanted to feel more comfortable in the room. And so she was on stage and now she's working with billionaires. Wow. So it it happens fast. And and it's, it's really just about like assuming your throne. Yeah. It's, it's stepping into the vision and expecting it to come. And then guess what it does. And it it might come in a totally different way than you think. And it might be even bigger and better than you think. And that's where you get to like release the attachment to it. But just remember that as you're taking action towards it, you're telling the universe that you want it. You're telling God you want it. You're like, I'm here. I'm ready. I'm taking action. Bring it. So when the opportunity comes, guess what? She looked good. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And she had the clothes to then go to on the yachts with the billionaires, right? Like she, she was ready for it. Right. Right. I think that's part of the preparation. You know, we could have the opportunity come and we miss it because we aren't ready, prepared, whether it is energetically or, um, you know, even with our content, you know, we don't really know what to say. So even if the opportunity came, we wouldn't be ready for it. I know I had a speaking engagement where they were like, ah, we just had somebody cancel. Can you come next week? And I was ready because I had, you know, I had my keynote prepared. And so it was an easy yes. And I could finagle things to go. And so I think good thing. I I thought good thing I was ready. If I wasn't ready, this opportunity wouldn't have been such an easy yes. And I think that the opportunities come um, even easy. It's easier, right? When you're prepared. And so stepping into who you want to be and starting to act as if is part of that preparation work. 100%. So what would you tell a coach who is like, all right, I am wanting to build my six figure programs. I'm wanting to step into my seven figure coaching business. Like I'm doing the things, but I'm not quite there yet. What would be the first step you'd have them do? Yeah. So I usually, this is where I like to start with a little visualization meditation and just close your eyes and, and imagine yourself when that does come true. Like just imagine what you're doing. Imagine what a typical day looks like. Just sit there and really visualize and feel yourself in it. And then start to ask yourself, what am I wearing? What colors am I wearing? What silhouettes am I wearing? Do I have on a flowy dress? Do I have on a really cool power suit? Like just, you'll be surprised what comes to you when you allow yourself to be in the state and then journal on that, like actually journal on what vision came to you. And then if it helps to jump on Pinterest or um, look through magazines, or even as you're watching TV shows, just be aware of if you see someone wearing something and you get that little ping of 
that's my outfit. That's what I'm wearing. Like it's, you get to start to notice that and then start to compile that. And you'll start to, as, as you look at things, you'll start to see your style start to emerge. Like maybe you realize I do love blazers. Every single person has blazers on, or maybe you realize it's like color, um, you know, color blocking that you really love. Or maybe you realize you love like a Parisian look. So it's, it's starting to pull together the, the, the vibes that make you feel like you already have what it is you truly desire. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to hear what you guys come up with as you do this visualization and really think about what it is you want, where do you want to be? Who do you want to be? And what would you be wearing in that season of your life? And then reverse engineer it and start to do it now. So one thing that you can do if you are interested in starting this journey is to take Amanda's free quiz. She has a confidence color quiz on her website. If you go to Amanda Wheel, W-E-I-L style.com, you'll be able to find that. The link will be in the description as well. But I think that's a great place to start because that could be, again, it doesn't have to be a buy a whole new wardrobe, but it could be a few signature pieces that make you feel really good. Absolutely. Start slow, start slow. And then you start to get more and more clear and then it becomes easier to purge and it becomes easier to find the pieces. You get to just be more intentional. I love it. All right. I've got two last questions for you. Yes. Okay. Um, The first one is as um, an entrepreneur, right? We know what it's like to kind of break through our own personal glass ceilings, to let go of the things that are no longer serving us and make the shifts that we feel led to shift. Um, But we also know that it's not a straight line. It's a roller coaster. (laughs) And so I'd love to hear a few maybe books that you've read or um, some things that you did on your entrepreneur journey that were aha moments or breakthroughs for you. Those are great questions. You know, what comes to mind, number one is I've always had a coach. Like that was huge for me to always have a coach. And it was a coach who had something that I was aspiring to. Um, and so thinking back on on something when I first started my entrepreneurial entrepreneurial career and had made the leap from corporate, um, there was some debt that I started to take on. There was credit card debt and I had never experienced that before and it felt very scary. And what this coach helped me realize is I was making it wrong. I was making the debt wrong and that was then creating more and more and more debt. So she helped me really shift my mindset around that to understand that the debt was actually an investment in my business because I was spending on things like coaching and it was investment. And it's not like I was going out and taking all these trips and just shopping aimlessly, right? I was spending on my business. So she helped me rewire the way my thoughts around that. And that actually is what then helped shift my business to start attracting in more clients and release the debt. And the debt is now completely gone. So that was really big. So I think number one is don't make the debt wrong. That was really huge for me. Um, I think that the second thing I would share is it is a roller coaster. There's days where you're going to want to quit. There's days where you are like the highest of high and just keep going. Just keep going. It's, there's no perfect way. There's no perfect answer. There's no straight line as you were saying. Yet, if you just commit to keep going and taking one step, one step, one step, things will start to fall into place. Awesome. I love that. And I agree. I think we can speed up the process if we don't try to figure it out on our own. Having a coach is paramount because we don't need to be solopreneurs sitting behind our computer by ourselves. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like we really can learn, especially being a female, like we, I feel like I learn best in community and I want feedback and I want to brainstorm with people and I don't, want to just sit here with my notebook alone. And so being a part of coaching communities has been paramount for me because it's helped me to get energy from people who are doing what I want to do, to learn from them, to get immediate feedback. And I say half the battle is keeping ourselves in our own game. And so putting these types of things on our calendar helps us to stay focused and motivated. So we actually like birth the dream that's in our heart. Yeah. And then in those communities, something else too, is like, I I used to think, oh gosh, well, I'll never have that. Like, oh, well, she has that because, and I had to check myself for the judgment around that as well. And like shift into, wait a second, that's amazing. That's something that I can aspire to and to really um, get excited for everyone and their accomplishments, because that was the beautiful energy that I was pouring on it. And the more I started to do that, then things started happening to me too. And I was like, okay, 
these universal <laughs> laws. This stuff really works. Okay. <laughs> All right. My final question is what is one thing you do every day that you couldn't live without? Um, my, my morning practice and it, it's not anything massive and major. And it's literally just like making my yummy coffee and sitting in my little area, looking at my beautiful plants and the birds and maybe doing a little meditation, um, journaling on my intentions for the day, doing my energetic match statement, even if it's five minutes, it's usually about 20 to 30, but just taking that space in the morning sets up my entire day. So that's something that I have to do every day. I love it. Well, thank you, Amanda, for sharing your expertise and your wisdom. And what I love of you have found a way to um, like live in your passion zone. You know, this is something that has always come naturally to you and you found a way to, to do it as like as a profitable business where you not only get to do it all day long yourself, but you also get to share your wisdom with people like me who are not. (laughs) <laughs> designers <laughs> or color people like seriously we there's people that need your help and I am one of them so thank you for saying yes to your spark uh you guys check out her free color quiz I think we all could learn and grow in this area as we're stepping into ourselves as we want to be three steps ahead of where we are now so thank you so much again Amanda thank and you. Yes, absolutely. And you guys, um, be sure to stay tuned. Uh, We'll be back next week with another great episode on Coaching for Coaches. Have a great day.